So where, where's Jack? Where, 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 where? There he is. Jack, stand up, because that's pretty spectacular stuff. Recognized by President Obama, 16-year-old Jack Andreka may be the Thomas Edison of our time. He's been making headlines ever since winning the 2012 Intel Science Fair for his revolutionary cancer test. Well, what really motivated me to create a new way to detect pancreatic cancer was the death of a close family friend who was like an uncle to me. We're here at the home of Jack and Draca, where we'll explore the environment that nurtured his passion. He always was very persistent. You know, I think that was like an inborn characteristic of his. We just raised our kids to, you know, be curious and creative. I understand you're a competitive kayaker? Yeah, so I'm actually on the U.S. Junior Wildwire team. I started really getting into competitive kayaking in sixth grade, so. Sixth grade was kind of like me becoming ultra competitive. There was like strong sibling rivalry during science fairs. Like we would compete all the time. Oh my God! So with a lot of things, you know, they might ask questions and we're like, well, figure it out yourself. These days, Jack and Draco doesn't spend much time in high school. In fact, last year, he missed about 90% of his classes. What's he doing? He's talking to executives at biotech companies, patent lawyers, and even the president. But it was here in science class in North County High School in Glen Burnie, Maryland, where he made his revolutionary discovery. Past elementary school, my education was kind of paramount in my success. I think that was kind of where I got a lot of my competitiveness. Like, it made science fair a blood sport. It was like the Hunger Games, but for science. School ends at two, and then you have eight hours to tinker and think, and, and there's so much on the internet to learn. Using the internet, I found that 85% of all pancreatic cancers are diagnosed late when someone has less than a 2% chance of survival. And so also our current method of diagnosis is this $800 test that misses 30% of all cancers and hasn't been updated in over six decades. And that's what really motivated me. And so essentially I typed up a list of like the procedure, materials list, timeline, and budget. And I sent that to 200 professors at Johns Hopkins University and the National Institutes of Health. Then eventually one person, Dr. Maitra, finally said yes. And so then I go into his lab for this big interview and I finally get through this hour long interview. I answered all the questions and then finally I got the lab space I needed. Then when he finally got his lab, I just drove him there and I would just sit out there for hour after hour until my poor little iPod and iPhone would run out of batteries. And after seven months of like trials and tribulations, I finally got through it all and I ended up with that one small paper sensor. And so it was really exciting that one day in late winter when he came out late at night and it had worked. Jack's new method of cancer detection uses strips to test blood for high levels of mesothelin, a protein overproduced in people with pancreatic, ovarian, and lung cancers. So what I do is I first get my initial reading and I record it. And then what happens is I take some of my sample and I disperse that cancer biomarker in it. I just pipette out a bit. Then I apply six microliters, and you apply it right between the two electrodes. I just continuously take this resistance measurement and it forms a graph. And at the end, I subtract the maximum minus the minimum. And then based on that difference, I can tell whether or not a patient has pancreatic cancer. And even in the early stages, I can detect it when someone has close to 100% chance of survival. 100 people die of pancreatic cancer every day, and my motivation was, how am I going to help save 100 lives today? Winning at Intel International Science and Engineering Fair was pretty much a childhood dream come true. I mean, that's kind of what got me into science. I just remember, wow, you can kind of be like a superstar with science. So ever since then, it was my dream just to go to ISAF. And when I won the entire thing, I wasn't expecting to win any award. And so it was absolutely crazy, as you can see by my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> to see your child's childhood dream come true, what could be better than that? Seeing somebody like Jack succeed at his age and sit in the booth with Michelle Obama and stuff like that, I think that will allow students to understand that it is possible, that they could do it if they wanted to. Look, it's leaking to the bottom. Oh, shoot, that is not good. Just don't mind that. One of the most valuable lessons I have learned throughout this entire experience is your ideas, like typically as a young person, your ideas don't really get heard, but like as an influencer, your ideas do get heard. Jack was called the Thomas Edison of our time. I think that is very true. Uh, Jack, can you, can you share with us uh, a little bit of the backstory? 
and looking at adapting it to these different uh, diseases. Because what's so cool about this is it's kind of like a platform for the detection of any biological agent. And that means any disease, ranging from Alzheimer's to other forms of cancer, even HIV, AIDS, and heart disease. I actually don't think I'm a role model in like that sense, but like it's definitely interesting and I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> Only on Al Jazeera America. A team of scientists are taking their inspiration from nature. Technology, it's a vital part of who we are. They had some dynamic fire behavior. And what we do. Transcranial direct stimulation. Don't try this at home. Techno's team of experts show you how the miracles of science. This is my selfie. What can you tell me about my future? Can affect and surprise us. Sharks like affection. Catch new episodes of Techno on Al Jazeera America. Check your local listings or visit aljazeera.com.